Hi everyone, and welcome back to English for You. I'm Pat, and I'm Mike. So today we're with Martin and Sophie as they reach their hotel. What we talked about yesterday was them trying to book a hotel online. Now they found a place on a website that looked pretty cheap, but it also looked pretty horrible. Yeah, that's true. Sophie noticed right away that the place had a bad rating. It had a bad grade, like one star out of five. And so she didn't read the review. But even with that one star, she imagined that it would be smelly. It would be full of cockroaches. It would just be a nasty place. And she did not want to stay there. So Martin kept looking, and he actually found a place that looked fancier. So the pictures, at least, were nicer. We assume it had a higher rating. And as they looked further, they discovered. Some other good things about this second hotel. Yeah, it may not have been as close to the city centre as the first, but it was near a metro or、hmm. subway stop, and it also had free Wi-Fi and breakfast in what was a fairly reasonable price. So they both agreed this is the one they wanted to stay at. So they made the move and they booked it. They made a reservation at that hotel. We assume they already had their plane ticket. So with all the major planning done, they could start getting into the details. And that was an itinerary, a schedule of activities, places they wanted to go, how they were going to get around. You know, a detailed travel plan, basically. And the first thing Martin looked for was something that was probably on a lot of people's minds when they go to Tokyo: food. He、mm. wanted to go and have some really good ramen, like really good ramen. Really good noodles, so he looked for great ramen restaurants in Tokyo. That was the internet search that he made. Right, and today they arrive at the hotel. Will it be as good as they hoped? Let's read on and find out. Reading. Holiday hotels booking online. Martin and Sophie check into their hotel. Uh, Martin, are you sure this is the room we booked? There's no window in here, and there are two single beds. It's tiny too, and I can't connect to the Wi-Fi. I think someone made a mistake. Let me call reception and see what's going on. Martin calls reception. Excuse me, I think there has been a mistake. This isn't the room we booked. We asked for a double room with a city view. Tell them about the Wi-Fi. Oh, and we can't pick up the Wi-Fi signal here. Hmm. I'm sorry about that. Let me check your booking. The receptionist checks their booking. I must apologize. We've made a mistake. You're actually supposed to be in room 1509. I'll send somebody up right away to take you to your room. Oh, no problem. Thanks. Martin hangs up. It's lucky we didn't start unpacking our baggage yet. We're in the wrong room. All right. So the article begins with them. They've just arrived. Apparently, cool. So we're kind of following along very closely with their holiday. We know they've just arrived because it says Martin and Sophie check in to their hotel. And to check in, well, what is this? This is something that we do when we travel. Basically, you're kind of arriving at a place that is expecting you, and you're officially saying, "I'm here." And they're probably officially doing something like checking your name off a list or putting your information into a computer. You check into your flight when you first get to the airport, and they take your bags to put them on the plane. They give you a ticket. They you show your passport and that kind of stuff. And then once you get off the plane and get you. To your hotel, you'll do something similar. You'll give them your name, show them some ID, maybe hand over a credit card that you're going to use to pay. It's your official. I'm here. I'd like to get my room now, please. Right, and we then take them to the room. They've done all that stuff at the desk. They're up to their room, but immediately things are not looking right at all. Cockroaches? Not quite,、okay. but it's not as good as they were thinking it would be. Sophie says, "Um, Martin." Are you sure this is the room we booked? 
There's no window in here,、hmm? and there are two single beds. That's not the fancy room they wanted. Yeah, you you kind of expect to have, even if it's just a small window, some kind of window to let in the light. If the room had no window, it's better be super cheap. And there are only two single beds. So here we're using the word single as an adjective. We can use the word single as an adjective to mean somebody who's unmarried or doesn't have a girlfriend. Or boyfriend, they are single. But here we're using it to mean it's just for one person to use. A single bed is a fairly small bed that only one person could sleep in comfortably. You could say a single room is a hotel room that's only really designed for one person to stay there. You could talk about other things like a single seat on a train is just one person's seat, not round a table or anything for others. So here's another one we could use. You can get a hotel room with two single beds or one queen size. Queen size is enough to sleep two people.、Um, and then Sophie notices notices something else,、uh, or a couple of other things she's not happy with. So no window. Two single beds. She adds, "It's tiny too, and I can't connect to the Wi-Fi. So the room is very, very small. There's no window, so it's kind of like staying in a closet or something like that. And of course, she can't connect to the Wi-Fi. Remember yesterday, one of the things that she was most excited about with this hotel was that it had free Wi-Fi. Well, they might have free Wi-Fi, but it doesn't matter because she can't connect to it. To connect is basically to join something, to link something, to take two things that were on their own and then to put them together in some kind of way. If you're holding hands with someone. When your bodies are connected by your your hands that are holding on to each other, if you plug anything into the wall, if you plug in a phone or a, 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 a something into your computer, like a, a mouse or a keyboard, or you connect that to the, the the electricity coming out of the wall for any kind of machine, like a a computer, a television, a coffee machine, you're connecting it to something else, often to make it work. And that's what she's having a problem with with the Wi-Fi in her phone. She can't connect. She can't. Make the Wi-Fi work. She's basically offline、um, and can't get on the internet, so that's no good. She needs to be able to connect to the the internet so she can connect to all her favorite websites as well.、Uh, for example, for this verb connect, we could say Jacob uses Bluetooth. To connect his smartphone to the car stereo. Okay, so he doesn't actually have to physically plug it in. He can use the signal, as you do with Wi-Fi, to connect these two machines. Exactly. I use Bluetooth quite a lot with headphones,、okay. with stereos,、yeah. with speakers, that kind of stuff. Very useful bit of technology. So Martin looks around and thinks of all these things Sophie has said and says. I think someone made a mistake. But he's got a plan to sort it out. He says, "Let me call reception and see what's going on." So he's going to phone down to the front desk of the hotel, the reception. Normally, there's a phone with a button on that puts you directly in touch with someone down there, and he's going to sort this out. All right. So he does. He picks up the the telephone in the room, not using his smartphone, but、uh, using the telephone that would probably be on a table next to the bed in the room. He picks it up, presses a special button, or at least one of the numbers, and then he calls down to reception. What is reception? Basically, it's also called the front desk. It's the place that you would check in. It's where they greet you at the hotel, where they might keep your keys or you know give you things that you're waiting for or something like that. This is where the、uh, the point of contact. Contact where you will probably find hotel staff all the time, 24 hours a day, waiting there to help you with problems or to answer questions. You can either go there or call down if you're in one of the rooms.、Um, so he calls down to reception, and、uh, someone obviously will pick up very quickly and hopefully help him with this problem. Yeah, we hear Martin say, "Excuse me." I think there has been a mistake. That's very polite of him. Yeah, this isn't the room we booked. We asked for a double room with a city view. So a double room would be a room with a double bed, not the two singles that they have, and with a city view. So this room should look out over the city. We use the word view to mean. Kind of an attractive, I guess, perspective, or at least some nice things to see. It could be in the local area. You could say, "I want a view of the city, a view of the river, a view of the harbour, the sea, the ocean, whatever it happens to be." It's whatever 
that you can see either from out of your window or from standing at a certain place and looking in a particular direction. You could say there are a lot of nice views in this area. There's lots of nice things to look at, lots of beautiful scenery, lots of lovely nature. Here's another example. It was a rainy day, so the view from the top of Taipei 101 was blocked by clouds. You couldn't see the streets. You couldn't really see anything. Sophie noticed that he、uh, missed out on one thing. She says, "Tell them about the Wi-Fi." You can imagine her sort of shouting that he, so he can hear, and probably the people at reception can also hear. Don't forget about the Wi-Fi. Don't forget that the Wi-Fi doesn't work either. And so Martin doesn't forget. He adds that. Yep, he does what he's told and says, "Oh, and we can't pick up the Wi-Fi signal here."、Hmm. Now the word. Pick up can be used to mean actually lift something off the ground or collect something or someone from a place, but here we're using it in terms of connections. For example, Wi-Fi, radio frequency signals, some kind of thing. If you can't pick it up, it means the device you're using, your phone, your computer, or your radio, cannot connect to a particular Wi-Fi network. It can't connect and pick up and listen to a particular radio frequency for a certain. Station. It basically means there is no possibility of you listening to that or using that network. You can't pick it up. All right, and you can pick up the signal. In this case, it's a Wi-Fi signal. We also might talk about picking up radio signals or something like that. What is a signal? Well, basically, it's an invisible.、Um, Beam of energy. It's an it's an invisible thing that we can't see. That's why it's invisible. But it's basically sending energy through the air, and through that energy, we're able to communicate. All right. So if you're, for example, driving in a car with a radio inside, you don't have to have the car plugged into something to give you a signal. Like your television or your computer at home might be plugged in to get the internet or to get television. This stuff travels through the air. It's the same way that cell phones. Are able to to work even if you're out standing in the middle of a field. As long as you're somewhere near a town or a city where people might live, your cell phone will be able to pick up a signal and you'll be able to make a call. For example, you can pick up the signal from that radio station up to 300 kilometers away. So Martin has made his various complaints. We then see the receptionist say. Hmm. I'm sorry about that. Let me check your booking. So we looked at the word reception, which is the place where people enter a hotel or an office or something like that. A receptionist is a person who works in one of these receptions. Their job is to welcome visitors when they come in, help them check in if it's a hotel, and answer the phone or answer questions from the visitors and the guests. Basically, they deal with any problems, any questions, anything that's going on. If they need to get a manager out, then they can do so. But they should be able to help the guests with anything that they want to ask about. That's right. They receive people. They answer calls. They greet people when they first arrive, and then help them get the pla- get the information or find the place that they're looking for. So the receptionist gets to it and checks their booking. You can imagine he's typing into a computer, putting in their name or the room number, seeing if everything makes sense, seeing if that's exactly what they were supposed to get or the kind of room they were supposed to get. And it turns out. It's not. There was a problem. This is incorrect.、Mm, and the receptionist says, "I must apologize." Yes, you must. To apologize means to say sorry. It is to express regret that you feel bad about something that has happened, a mistake that's been made, or a misunderstanding, or something like that. You feel bad about it, and you want to communicate this to the person you're talking to, and you kind of are basically promising that you're going to do something about it, or at the very least, you're not happy that they're not happy either. For example, we might say, "I think you should apologize for losing your sister's headphones."、Hmm. Okay, you did it. It's your fault. You should say sorry. And that saying of sorry, that is an apology. We also use this noun apology, a p o l o g y. That's what you say. And when you are saying that, you are apologizing. So we've made a mistake. 
I'm sorry. This is the apology from the receptionist. This is the receptionist apologizing. We've made a mistake, and then he kind of explains. He or she kind of explains. You're actually supposed to be in room 1509. Oh,、uh, so maybe they're in room 1905. Yeah, or 915. Or 1059 or something like that. It's probably something like that where the numbers got a little mixed up,、um, and that's why the receptionist says you're actually supposed to be in this other room with this other. Room number, because actually is sort of like truly or really. This is the more correct information. I'm adding new information, and this information is more correct or more true in some kind of way. And that's what gives us the idea that there's just been a, a little mistake with the room number. It kind of got a little mixed up. For example, for this adverb, actually, we could say, although I've lived in Taiwan for six years, this is actually the first time I've been to Kending. And here the information is that Martin and Sophie were supposed to be in room 1509. We use this phrasal verb "be supposed to" followed by another verb "be supposed to be," "be supposed to go," that kind of thing. And this is used to show what was or what is meant to happen in a particular situation. Or what somebody is expected to do. For example, if you're a teacher, you are supposed to educate the students, to teach them things, to make them feel interested in the lessons. If you are a student, you are supposed to do your homework. You are supposed to study for tests. You are supposed to ask questions if you don't understand. These are the things that are expected of this situation or of this person. All right. So the receptionist has apologized, had said sorry, has yes admitted or acknowledged they've made a mistake and pointed out what should have happened, what should actually happen, and then works to fix the problem. I'll send someone up right away to take you to your room. Yeah, somebody, someone means the same thing. Oh, somebody. Yes, he sends.、Uh, he sends a person up. Maybe,、uh, of course, another hotel worker. Not. He or she himself, the receptionist, but someone else who works there, and they will help、uh, Martin and Sophie move to another room. Show them the other room. They're not just going to say, "Oh, really? That's our mistake." Well, too bad. No, no, they're going to fix the situation and bring them to a room with a double bed, a beautiful view, working Wi-Fi, and it's not tiny either. Yeah, hopefully they will also carry Martin and Sophie's bags, and maybe they'll give them a little extra something to make up for the mistake. Well, that would be nice, like a fruit basket, something like that. Martin then says, "Oh, no problem, thanks." So, yeah, he's quite pleased that this situation has been sorted out so quickly and easily, and that it's not like, "Oh, your booking was wrong, and this is it. This is where you have to stay." No, they just got sent to the wrong place, and now they'll get the room they wanted. All right, so Martin hangs up the phone since. The phone call is done, and he's gotten the answer that he wanted. Yep, and says to Sophie, "It's lucky we didn't start unpacking our baggage yet. We're in the wrong room." So yeah, that's what you normally do when you arrive at a hotel room. You get your suitcase, you put it on a table, and you start unpacking. You take the things. Out of your bag or suitcase, and put them in drawers. You hang them up if they need to be hung up. You maybe connect wires up to outlets so you can power up your cell phone. That kind of thing. That is what unpacking is. It's the negative form of pack. To pack means to take things and put them into a bag. To unpack means to take the things out of the bag and put them into their new, even if they're temporary homes. And that is the end of the article. So it was a bit of a false start for Sophie and Martin. They did get sent to the wrong room, but all is well. They'll go to the nice room, the fancy room that they booked, and they can start enjoying their vacation in Tokyo. Finally, it's time for some ramen. Indeed, and that's where we'll leave them as we go to today's for you chat question. So our question today is: Do you like staying in hotels? What are some good or bad experiences you've had with them? I mean, I guess if it's a nice hotel, most people will say yes. But I, I do know some people, and I could maybe mention my father as one of them, who 
doesn't always enjoy the experience. He does like his home comforts and knowing where things are. Oh, okay. So he's never had bad experiences in a hotel. He just prefers to be at home. Yeah, he likes、okay. the vacations, but he doesn't like the process of vacationing. Sometimes he、oh. likes he likes to eat the food and enjoy the weather, but、mm-hmm. he doesn't always like the sort of change to his life situation. I see. Okay. Yeah, I would say I generally like staying in hotels. Of course, if they don't have Cockroaches and smell like wet socks. If they're nice hotels, I've had mostly good experiences in the hotels that I've stayed at. And any time I've had a little problem, like Martin and Sophie did with theirs, yeah, I found like a a call down to reception and you know a a polite pointing out of the mistake or the problem is a very good way to get it fixed really really quickly. Most hotel staff are very professional and just want to make sure you have a good time and don't give them a bad rating or a bad review.、Mm. So.、Uh, Uh, so yeah, I think most of my、uh, hotel experiences have been quite good. Yep, I've stayed in some lovely places, places that are we call them all inclusive, where、mm-hmm. all the food and drinks and everything is free. All you have to do is stay there.、Mm. Uh, those are great. I've stayed in hotels next to beaches where you could have your breakfast overlooking the sea.、Mm-hmm. That was great. If it's a bad experience, it's probably one that I've created myself、oh, by、really? yeah by going well. Let's book somewhere a little cheaper just、oh. to save money because we're spending a lot on other things. You know whether it's flights,、mm-hmm. and so by booking somewhere cheaper or on my first visit to Hong Kong, not booking somewhere and just arriving and hoping we could find somewhere because it was a last minute thing. I've ended staying ended up staying in some very small places that either. Not dirty, but kind of old, a bit run down.、Mm-hmm. You know, a little bit places that had a little bit of the smell of cigarette smoke in、oh. them. Those kind of places. Was it the famous Chungking Mansions in Hong Kong? I don't know.、No. It could have been. If this was ten years ago, or、mm. I can't really remember. But yeah, there's been a few places dotted around the world where I've had to either book the cheapest place I could find, or just book at the last minute and take what I could get. And the places were not bad, but very forgettable, and it didn't necessarily have the best night of sleep. So there you go. Like a lot of things in life, you get what you pay for. Yes. So if you pay for a cheap hotel, you might get a cheap hotel. Indeed.、So、that's a、yes. good word. Yes. One、wise. or two star at best.、Mm-hmm. But that is all the time we have for today. Thanks for listening, everybody. For English for You, I'm Pat, and I'm Mike. We'll talk to you again soon. Bye bye. Take care. Holiday hotels booking online. Martin and Sophie check in to their hotel. Ah,、uh, Martin, are you sure this is the room we booked? There's no window in here, and there are two single beds. It's tiny too, and I can't connect to the Wi-Fi. I think someone made a mistake. Let me call reception and see what's going on. Martin calls reception. Excuse me, I think there has been a mistake. This isn't the room we booked. We asked for a double room with a city view. Tell them about the Wi-Fi. Oh, and we can't pick up the Wi-Fi signal here. Hmm. I'm sorry about that. Let me check your booking. The receptionist checks their booking. I must apologize. We've made a mistake. You're actually supposed to be in room 1509. I'll send somebody up right away to take you to your room. Oh, no problem. Thanks. Martin hangs up. It's lucky we didn't start unpacking our baggage yet. We're in the wrong room. Vocabulary review. Single. Although my friend and I only booked a single room, it was large enough for two people. Connect. Sam connected his computer to the TV so he could watch a movie on a big screen. View. You can see a good view of the city from the top of the tower. Signal. The radio station didn't sound clear because the signal was bad. 
apologize. Carl apologized to Jane because he felt sorry about lying to her. Actually, Marcy thought she failed the test, but the teacher told her that she actually passed. 智慧小补帖 Unpack. The program is made by Huayong Kongzhong Media. Huayong Kongzhong Media Publishing Company. Please search for the nearest bookstore in your area. If you have any books you like to read, please call 02-2364-4000. 02-2364-4000. Or search on the internet. The address is www.dot.english.cu.dot.net. www.dot.english.cu.dot.net.